welcome back to Legacy Loading. This is episode five. Five. And, and we, we have, have a banger. Yeah. Big big guest right here. Special uh, guest. Big Mr. in our hearts. Mr. Nabil. Thank you guys. You guys are This is Nabil, for those who don't yeah. know. I, I'm I am Nabil. Um do yeah, tell us about it's yourself. It's an honor. It's an honor to be here. Honestly. Honor having you, man. I was actually thinking about that on the way over here. Like we're we're boys, we're friends, but yeah. also like it truly is an honor to have you on the yeah, podcast. Aside real, from man. all that. Uh, for real, because I know that both of us, obviously Joe more specifically, but um you've had a massive influence on our our being everyone. here in the first place. So um, yeah, so thank you so much. Yeah. I, mean, I, I, I don't even know if you realize how much of an influence you have on on the industry. I, mean, I, just, if I'm a, I don't, I don't, I never think about that. Like, it feels weird. Like, even hearing that, it's like you don't, you don't think about it. But when we were, no. we were talking the other night, there are always some moments where you're reminded. And I know you spoke yeah. about that one particular case. Is there, um, is there another moment that comes to mind, or you can share that one that where you're reminded about actually the kind of lives you're changing? Um. Usually, t- because of, I'm, I'm presuming the people that will watch us know about Summer Shredding Classic. Yes, mm-hmm. we um, talked about it. Before. Yeah. Okay. So it's, I would say those those weekends where people start coming in, and what makes the Summer Shredding Classic so unique is that it, because of the transformation classes, actually, but also mm-hmm. the the kinds of people that come to compete. It's like for a lot of them, it's the first show, and they feel comfortable to do that because it's through a YouTube series. It's so, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So like it's less pressure for them to, to try and do something. And these people always bring these stories with them. And every time I hear that, like it's crazy because when you make these videos on the output that we're doing and you, you never really think about just kind of grounding yourself and thinking, okay, this is what we're actually doing. But it's when someone tells you, like in the gym in Alpha Land 2 yesterday, someone showed me, crazy transformation he, like he turned his life around but it's like that's the impact that the yeah. channel has yeah um from the videos that we're I making like, it's crazy i feel like it's also become so normal to you like like you've been working with christian now for a while and like every day you're just doing dope shit you're filming with yeah. all these big names and it's become, it's become so just it's just everyday life for you it, it, you don't even it, like realize how special it is what you do day no, in and day out well it's it's everyday life but it's not by any means like <clears throat> normal still to mm-hmm. me because it's it you know, it's, it's really not. And, yeah. you know, especially every single time, because th- this is a big part of my life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. But it's also not, it's not where I live. And so like, yeah. that's another reason why I'm reminded so often is the amount of times I have to say goodbye to people, because even though I feel like I'm about to do something crazy and insane mm-hmm. and I love it, um, you know, that is in fact exactly what I do all f- just for a living as well. Mm-hmm. So like, that is my life, but it's like, it's definitely everyday life becomes very like out of the ordinary kind of so thing. For, for those who don't know who are listening, you're international. You're like, you fly here to film and then you go home. So you, you're not yeah. a citizen yet. Yeah. So yeah. So for people that don't know. Yeah. yeah. So, so I, I, yeah. yeah I what's the, give a little so rundown for those who don't know who you are or what you do. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that helps. Um, so Welcome to Legacy Loading. I'm so yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll start. We'll that. Go ahead. Just a little, um, little brief rundown of who yeah. you are, what you do. I'm Nabil. I am uh, currently 25 years old and I am a videographer. Um, and I am from the Netherlands uh, in Europe, which is a very small country um, known for a couple of things. Um, that waffle <laughs> thing we had? Yeah, the stir waffles. <laughs> Definitely a recommendation, <laughs> but um, yeah, that that's that's me, man. I've been doing videography for for a couple of years, and and things just uh, yeah for a couple of years. You know, How what's a couple of years? <laughs> the seven, six, yeah. seven. When years. did you couple. like? What made you pick up a camera? So let's, let's start there. Honestly, I don't necessarily even remember. I don't think there was necessarily interest from me because my mm-hmm. dream was to become a, a commercial airline pilot. That was what mm-hmm. I was going to do, um, but when I remember you needed like these, like a minimum of your, of your grades to mm-hmm. be able to do that and stuff. And yeah. I had all of it except for, um, what do you call it? Physics. I, I had, I missed Rick. out on like, I missed out physics. on like attempts. <laughs> like, so I couldn't, they wouldn't <clears throat> allow me to, to level up and like try yeah, and, yeah. and apply for the study. So I, then a lot of my friends went to a like a creative school. Mm-hmm. Dang. A creative college thing and, yeah. and and so because they went i decided to go there too i had wow. no interest in content or anything like shout that. out physics real quick for yeah shout out physics for fixing my life. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah that, it, because then when i i got in and 
um, the first assignment on, on like the introduction week was like, they handed you this camera and it's like, try and make a movie trailer from mm -hmm. our city in the Netherlands. Oh, right. Man. And so we did. And I, that's when I actually was able, like, I found out I was actually, I was like, Oh, I kind of like this. Yeah. Like yeah. I can, I like, this is, I can get this a shot and see what, what it turns out like. Yeah. Wow. Did, and that was so cool. very quick to evolve into just being obsessed with anything camera related, videography, photography, and, and it, it consumed everything. Like, that so, was my life. So you had a love for like aviation and like flying. Is that why yeah. you love the drone work? I love the drone work. Is that, yeah. is that where that comes from? Uh, I would say so. Um, it also, it's also fun because flying drones is, is a bit of a challenge. Mm -hmm. Like it's, especially when you try to get like creative with it and, and, you know, you have to be careful. It, it, it feels just weird sometimes, but it, like I do game. enjoy it. Like it's like the video game. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I, th that I think it's also partially just the, the feeling of flying being in control. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, with the love of it for aviation that I have, I think it definitely contributes. That's awesome. Did you, wow. did you have someone that you looked up to um, where you got some inspiration? Yeah, loads of people. Like, and it, like that list adds, like gets longer every day. Mm -hmm. But back then, I remember I decided to, just dive a little bit into what YouTube had to offer when it comes to filmmaking and stuff. And mm -hmm. the first channel that I found was uh, this channel called film riot. And they do like, they taught DIY filmmaking, like all these cool effects, like how to jump from mm -hmm. a roof and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Like they showed you how to do that. And that was really like that, a lot of the, the love for the craft that I have, especially today, it came from just watching their videos. And I was like, Oh man, I, I'm going to like try this out myself and see what it turns out like, and then how to get the most cinematic like qu image quality and all this. And, but then very quickly it just became my entire life. And I was, that's when I took a bit of a turn because at this creative college that I was studying at, it was, they really, if you were going to pursue camera work, then it was going to be like a broadcast film, you know, like always mm, yeah, the big ass camera on your shoulder. On the like, shoulder. Yeah. And, and that's not the filmmaking I enjoy. <clears throat> right. I, there, I wanted to do creative things, the fun yeah. things, you know, and sort of like <laughs> directing in a way too. Like you're, you're yeah. recording, but you're also, you're basically, you're, you're essentially one man crew a lot of right. the times. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and so filmmaking was also at the time, like becoming very accessible to anyone. Like it, everything became pretty affordable. You mm -hmm. think about it. And so yeah. like from that moment on, when I knew that the creative things was what I wanted to do and not necessarily like that, just I started doing work locally and that grew out to be its own little business essentially. And then I have my own clients. So you were making a living pretty early on in your career with it, this? I would, I would say the making a living part was it, that only came later. I would say, because in the beginning you start off, you do work for free and then you yeah. want word of mouth <clears throat> to do the job. And then you start making little, little, little. This is something we spoke about the last like, three podcasts like yeah. it's so refreshing to hear work for someone free. like you say it because then that's cause how it, it works yeah. like i i genuinely believe that <clears throat> you got to build that portfolio bro yeah. how are you gonna show anybody what you could do if you exactly. have nothing because that, that's exactly it and it's like i i think because it's funny i've never had a website i've never had like hmm. and every person that does what i do like has a website mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. and i i don't and it's only because like the word of mouth and everything, it, it helped me so well that I almost never felt like I had to reach out for clients. Yeah. That's awesome. And so then I just, what ended up happening was I was literally just doing my thing and doing the work, but it didn't feel like work because I, I didn't even think about promoting it somewhere or like putting it on a website or, but I was posting a lot of things just on either Facebook or Instagram, whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's, that was my own little diary in a way. Mm -hmm. And, but I, I, I treated it as if it was, and it, of course, it's it is such a big part of my life that I really, really enjoy mm -hmm. and love. So I was I was yeah. treating it as 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 such. I, I look at Instagram as a as a portfolio. Like for what we do, yeah. you don't even need a website anymore because you don't your yeah. IG. You could set it up however you want. Like you could post it however you want. Where yeah, here's my photos, yeah, here's like my videos. Card. It's like it's you, meet you could have a highlight like about me. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's literally just like the profile if you want to get to know someone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's what's the first thing you do like when you meet someone or like you connect yeah, with someone? Instagram. What's your what's your IG? Like, it's, it's I mean, you ask their name, but yeah. That no, you know what I mean. you meet someone. What's your say, IG? <laughs> so, so you would say you early on you learned everything just from literally going on YouTube and looking up. Yeah, and the degree because you, you, you did work. Had. Well, I did so I did because I didn't finish that. But that's, you had higher education in some of that stuff. 
Would you say it like, did it really no, because, translate? No, so, because that's that's the thing. Because I was the only reason I was able to get these like clients and do the work and learn in a field as opposed to go keep going to college was because um, they didn't teach anything. Essentially, mm. and also the year that I was in doing like these classes, we were the pilot we were the fr- because they restructured the whole thing and we were the first year to oh. see if that mm. would work yes or no and and for me wow. it didn't work that's and some that's pedigree awesome. that first so class cool. and it, it was it, and it was good in a way because when i was trying to like build my business and clients and stuff the school had an amazing just like they had all the cameras in the world all the new things the gimbals lenses they had everything and they were happy to support yeah. the students just by rent, renting it out it would be free yeah you know but um, it would just be available to us, and That's I cool. utilized that to so I didn't have to rent the gear myself and spend right. money, but rather I could just do it as cheap as possible. So early on, you had access to like gimbals and like good cameras and lenses and all that. Yes, but uh, they were very cautious with who they give out to and stuff, and mm-hmm. you know to certain degrees. And, yeah. um, but though there was access to that, I I've never utilized it to the full extent because I didn't care to take the sickest camera or the sickest lenses mm-hmm. or whatever. It, I I wanted to stay compact. Yeah, I remember, and that that's why it's funny that all of this led to me doing social media work because it's the same setup, even smaller in this day and age. Yeah, it's you know, so I've always knew, I've always known that that was like, I I didn't want to like be carrying things all the fucking time. Yeah. Like, yeah. What, what was the first camera where you really felt like, like connected to that you were like, oh, I can really make a lot of dope the, shit with this. The first one I bought was uh, a Canon seventy D. My, my dad actually did, um, and we, I remember it, because when I got it, that was like my dream. Before we got it, I watched about a million videos of people yeah, shooting with a Canon 60D, uh-huh. which I was, I, was in, I was like, I have to, I need to have that camera. Yeah. I just have yeah. to. <laughs> and then two months later, it came out with the 70D, and then I spent all this time just researching, research. I was so obsessed. And, and then one day, yeah. um, one day I had the 70D in the Netherlands, and... and um, me and my dad kind of talked about it, and then how much did it cost you to pick it up? That camera cost twelve hundred euros. It's like what a thousand, fourteen hundred maybe, right? Yeah. Now. Like fourteen hundred bucks. <clears throat> I think back then with the lens and stuff. With the lens, they, they yeah, you get you get a, you, you get a kit go. lens. It's not yeah, it's lens, not yeah. the, the greatest, but it, it, you know it works. But you can shoot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. Um, so when I had that, uh, like an, I remember unboxing it, I was like, I couldn't believe it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I did was, you go out and shoot right away? Straight point. away. Yeah. I still have the photos because I remember. Um, I wanted to test it out, and and uh, so I just got my parents in the in the backyard and shot some photos, and it's awesome. That's exactly what I did. That's so yeah. that's so crazy. Yeah. I used to shoot my mom in my backyard. I would just make it like sit on a chair, and I would like yeah. <laughs> change the lenses and everything. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So yeah, all these little things. Yeah, that's funny, man. So how did how did the whole fitness industry come about? Like, how did you? Because I'm sure you didn't. Were you into fitness back Not at back all. in Netherlands? Not at all. Like it it, it was very much everything but physical activity f- until I was like 18. Wow. Um, so I was very, and, and it was bad. It was deteriorating my health too in a way. Mm-hmm. And I, I was always the, the fat kid. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, I had I had a really, really good youth. I have nothing to complain about that. But I was definitely not the popular kid. Mm-hmm. I didn't go out, didn't like have every single Monday, people would come and tell their six stories from the weekend. And I, I'd have zero because I wouldn't yeah. do anything. The weekend, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like that. Um, but when I was 18, everything really changed and I, 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 I had to make a change and, and that's when I, I did, I started doing cardio, just like running. I loved going mm-hmm. for runs. I found a love for running really when I was 18. Um, what was the motivation to get on that? <laughs> ex-girlfriend. Okay. <laughs> yeah. hey, man. It was my first relationship too. And I, because I, I was like that before and yeah. did a very insecure little boy and, so I was like, oh, man, I I'm going to show her. I think everyone I can, well, can I was like, everyone I can't lose her, you know what I mean? Because yeah. oh, I'm never going to find another one. Mm-hmm. And uh, but, but then <laughs> she. 18 years old, bro. It's wild shit. Well, she was. <laughs> she was. Ending, she was yeah. usually when you're younger than me, too. Yeah. Um, but no, she actually. It was my first relationship. So I, I was very attached to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, when she you ended don't up know cheating on me. Yet. You don't know anything else right. yet. So no. It's like the world's ending. Exactly. So, But it was really. I, it was very bad because um, I got cheated on by this girl with mm. like six or seven different guys. So it was like, and I found out about this after when I was, I remember I was on vacation with my parents actually here in uh, California. Yeah. And um, that's when I, I found, Man. I had my iPad with me. She was still logged in. I happened to take it and I saw all these notifications and like picture it. It was bad. 
Yeah. But anyways, like it was. So, so that's about your own personal fitness journey, but that, not like that, filming the content. No, yet. no, because that's how I didn't realize there was this whole fitness community on online until I when I started losing weight and I got first it was all the running, but then after that I had an opportunity to work with a personal trainer to get me in a gym, and I I took it because I was interested. I was just very. Wow, that's I don't know, just nervous, but yeah. and, and so when I did my own research and I found all these people on YouTube with the YouTube channels and you know I was like, whoa, I didn't know that. Is and there was one guy. Is that, is that Marine? It was Marine. Well, there was so it's funny because that's how I I found uh, Christian, Steve Cook, Marine, oh, all yeah. that. Like it was just a fitness community. That yeah. was the, that was the that was like the golden era right there. It right? was. It was 2018, yeah. right? 2019. So, yeah. right around that so you you found the fitness community and that was sort of inspiring yeah. you to keep on going. Yeah, because it it was teaching me a lot and especially with this one guy, Marine, who is Dutch, but he was making English videos and he was a young guy, he was 21 and he wasn't with Alfie at the time. No. He wasn't and um I felt relatable to him cuz like he was Dutch and he was trying to live his life and I was trying to do the same and make a change for myself. And his videos were such a good help. Um, just getting me, giving me the, the knowledge and the know-how and therefore the confidence to just get into the gym and, and start lifting some weights. But then also with the support of a personal trainer that I was, had access to. Mm -hmm. um, and before I knew it, I made this whole transformation for myself. I'm a totally different guy, like six months down the line, I was a totally different person and I felt very confident, but it was, also a big thanks to him mm -hmm. and i was just you know had you reached out to him at all in the meantime or were you just a fan at that time i was just a fan i never sent him a message how I, big was he at this time he had i'm pretty sure on youtube at like six i have 50 or 60k last oh. right because then you say you started about 50 when you yeah, yeah yeah exactly um so he was big but he was big somewhat and he was, still accessible like, but he was like, blowing like, up like yeah, yeah. rapidly too okay, yeah. and i noticed that and i remember he bought a new car and it was an Audi A5. It was so sick. And <laughs> I was like, man, he's living my dream life, man. Uh -huh. This guy is sick. And um, then one day I'm chilling with a buddy of mine. It was late at night. It was like 10.30 p.m. And we're talking about him because we <clears> both <throat> watch him. And mm -hmm. he, he goes, man, you should just send him a message. Because I said, oh, man, it would be so sick to do a video for him. Yeah. It's so sick. And then he said, you should send him a message. I'm like, I'm not going to sense one Instagram. Message. He's never going to see it. Like, he's never going to, like, these people don't respond. How crazy is that? But then he told me to just do it. And then I sent him a message. I said, hey, man, this is my transformation. It's showed him before and after. This is all thanks to you. Yeah. I, I want to re repay you for all the, your efforts. Like, can wow. we, can we, sh can I shoot like a sick, like this a short is, documentary? This is crazy. You this still have, crazy. You still have those DMs? Yeah, I, I do. I definitely do have them. Um, I want to shoot a short documentary for him because he was <laughs> blowing up. I was like, man, this is going to be a passion project. It's going to be sick. I'm going to tell a story. He's going to blow up. It's going to be good because like, I'll, because I'm in his like, doing this in his prime kind of thing. Yeah. Were you pretty confident in your skills at that time too? Like you knew if you had this I opportunity. I wasn't my skills. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. wasn't. It, it, it was, I mean, it was, I was, ha I was very, I wanted to learn every single day. And I, I noticed because of, I was so obsessed with it and stuff that, like I, the whole process of getting better became much more fun, but I knew what I needed was this passion project that I wanted to do, especially for him. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and that's, that, what's, that's what's important too. I feel like, cause yeah, it meant more to you than just work. It wasn't just like, it was, it was, it literally was just a client. Like, it was like, this is someone you looked up to, someone yeah. you wanted to do something for. I wanted to do something for him and I wanted to be involved, like not involved, but just like, you know, when you look up to someone, but you're, you mm -hmm. just really want to have a conversation with them. Yeah. You, you, and, and remember, get that, right that now. was the first, <laughs> for real. that was the first, the inter first interaction I had with him was the first time I, I experienced it in such a way where if you, how like the love that he had for and still has for like doing everything he was doing so much passion I, and that i felt related to that because of my passion for videography and stuff mm -hmm. so he responded to your dm that night the next day that night two minutes later two oh my minutes God. later and i i was I, I thought he would never um but he responded shoot to me later shot, yeah bro. shoot your shit. shot literally that's I mean? that's how it is because he you know and he was like hey man I'm sure sick and i was like well shit. i was like, just sure sick let's go <laughs> <laughs> let's meet up <laughs> it was crazy and um it, that just became a that one video never happened ironically he just like mm. i i just started helping him editing his vlogs and people already saw like a different style and they liked it and then so you, you were, didn't meet up in person he just would send you were it editing his no footage? I, we met up in person first okay were you filming in, or he was just, you were just first footage. Was, we were trying to plan to shoot the days to shoot this mini documentary. Mm -hmm. Um, and as we did that, like leading up to that, he was like, Hey man, maybe like 
maybe this could be like a little test, like, can I send you this and can you edit the the workout part? I vlogged Sorry, it myself, like G Canon G7X, like, mm -hmm. but I did it. And um, that was also the first time I was in such a flow state because I was actually having such a good time editing what I was editing. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was like, oh, this is fun. Um, what were you editing on? Final Cut? Oh, Premiere. Premier. I'm Premier. always on Premiere, yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you, loyal. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I don't, I personally don't like editing someone else's footage. I don't, I don't, like, I hate it. I don't, I don't necessarily hate it, but I just, I'm not a fan. But mm -hmm. at, at, at that point, it was, it didn't even feel like that. It was more like, okay, he's giving me an opportunity. Yeah, well, to yeah, at that, at that time, yeah. So, like, it, and when I, when I did that, like, and then we, sh we shot the first video, but it wasn't even for the documentary. It was like, he was doing his first ever meetup. Mm -hmm. Um, so he needed some help filming. So I, mm -hmm. I said, yeah, sure. Yeah. And that was the first full vlog I edited. And then that was it. Did I, you, we knew that this <laughs> documentary was probably not going to happen. But rather, <laughs> it was just like just we started. Editor. We started just making videos together, mm -hmm. and people loved it. And that just had a, and you that did changed that for everything. free. I did that for that, free. All yeah. that was for free. For how long? If you're comfortable sharing that, how long were you working for free? Because I know you felt like what he gave you was much more than monetary. So uh, over, you were like, over, it was over the time of I want to say like a, maybe a couple months, maybe three, wow. three, two or three months. I, I'm not entirely sure, but it was a long time because like some days we wouldn't shoot. Like you know what I mean? It, so we didn't really shoot like every like for a couple of days every single week kind of thing. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, it wasn't like consistent schedule. No, no, but like I would, over the period of around three months, we shot a couple of videos. I think it was three months anyways. Yeah. Uh, we knew each other for a bit at that point wow. and um but he kept on saying i need to pay you and i i kept on saying i don't want to get like that that's you, not what you i'm doing felt like you owed him because yeah how much the impact he had on your life yeah big that he didn't even realize that he was impacting your life no, he was just all. he's just making, making video, videos you like. know and but i think because we were both from we were both very pure from from you know in terms of what we want to do for other people and mm -hmm. i think that just absolutely clicked yeah. and, and also when he realized that there was absolutely no way i was going to give him my bank account details because i just didn't want to get paid um he then actually turned it around and said do you like traveling and i said yes he goes well, how about if i if i take you for a month on like a sick trip and i cover all the costs you don't have to worry about a thing and i said well f fucking hell yeah <laughs> but only if I, I said then we have to we have to utilize it because if you're going to go on a trip you're going to want to shoot content like let's set some goals yeah so so you so actually put crazy. some you put some pressure on him yeah. to like dude let's start yeah and, but that was the dynamic this. like we we both pressured us because we knew we're capable of doing great things yeah and so yeah. we decided that one of the goals was going to be for this small, entire month that we're going to be traveling and despite the hours that you're on the airplane for it's mm -hmm. like we do daily uploads daily and then next to that um hit a hundred thousand subscribers so you were right about 50 and yeah, you had 50, to go in 60. one month you're gonna double that yeah, yeah. like over like 60 subscribers 60k and uh at that point i think maybe yeah a, a sub goal of yours was to be with to get with <laughs> alphalete right yeah so it was those three goals were like get to 100k um subscribers uh get daily uploads done and then um get a sponsorship by alphalete those <laughs> those three goals wow. and we achieved all of them and and the craziest thing is I, i'll never fucking forget this is during this trip it, it opened so many doors for us and 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 people were curious who the person was behind the camera and stuff. it's like that was it that was my first taste of just seeing that you're making an impact like you're actively in the moment realizing that this is what you're doing yeah and on day 30 of that trip he gets a text from someone who then turn out to be Christian offering <laughs> a sponsorship 30. by Alphalete. Yeah. And man, it was so crazy because you really feel like you've actually done something like together. Yeah. You've, you've worked towards something. And oh, for yeah, me sure. to have been like, to have how a crazy. part in that is, is sick. So that, it, it, it was funny how that would open so many doors and we didn't even know. Right. I never knew any of that. I know. Right. I didn't know any of that. Insane. So, so in that month you were, he was doing meetups. You were all around the, like, yeah. UK. Where, like, where was the trip? You? We, did you, uh, did you say it? Where, where was the trip? It, it started in Dubai. We were there for four oh, days. Wow. There for four days. We collabed with one guy. Um, and then we flew to Australia right after that for, uh, <laughs> two and a half weeks. <laughs> Australia. <laughs> two and a half weeks. And Damn. we, we started in Brisbane at the Gold Coast. That's where I met up with Igor. Igor, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Physique. Physique. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out, man. Yeah, shout out, man. Shout and also, out uh, shout out I'm sure if you know him, do you know Friesma? Uh, not super. He's, familiar. He's, he's, Sounds familiar. He's an uh, 
I think he's is from New Australia? Zealand. He, he is from New Zealand, lives in Australia. Uh-huh. Um, and we met, we met up with him, and then we did a whole meetup in um, in this park in uh, in the Gold Coast somewhere. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's where like everyone just came and took photos with everyone yeah. and all the stuff. Um, and this is crazy because this is also where people would for the first time say to my face like, "Oh, man, these these locks you're doing are so sick." And, yeah. like, and I was like, "Whoa, fuck!" <laughs> so, yeah. um, and then after that, we flew to New Zealand for a week and a half, uh, where we ended the trip and everything. And yeah, then flew back. I mean, we don't have to wow. brush over the part where you said you were uploading every day. You were filming and then editing oh, at yeah. night, and then waking up the next day and filming again and editing. Yeah, like, yeah. How? how were you just living life like where you just didn't care? It was like, just your only just, priority, right? Like, it, it was. It was literally just. It didn't feel like because it, it didn't matter what we we're doing. Everything would feel like we're living like like fucking crazy lives. Yeah, yeah. you know, and 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 just to, with the flexibility and stuff, and wherever you can, you edit. Yeah, you know, and it's a lot of footage, and, and so it was really good for me too to throw myself in the deep like that because yeah. if you do that and it, I'm even noticing it now as well with the regular output yeah you're editing every single day, but it it helps you stay on top of your craft mm-hmm. efficiency but also quality and everything else so it, it learns you so much this is the type of thing that's so beneficial for people to hear because you you're like I'm sure for the rest of your life you're probably going to get people that are like oh like you know he somehow got in with Christian and now he's famous because of that but mm-hmm. like you don't think about what you had to do to even get to that point no. and the amount of work and the amount of hours and the amount of free work that, mm. that goes into it. So it's like yeah. before y'all make judgments about people because where they are, and I'm talking about anyone in the industry that's, that's making it or made it like you don't know what they had to do to get there. It's right. not like yeah. one TikTok. It's not one video. It's not <clears throat> one collab. It's all the hours and yeah. effort put in yeah. for that. I said all the time, it's the little things you do every day. It's like a little, you know what it little is? Little wins every day over time. Yeah. It's going to, turn into a big thing it's not, it doesn't happen overnight it's just that i don't know people people sometimes just need to get it out of their heads that they're not special you yeah. know what i mean it, it, and it sounds harsh but if you when you think about it it's if you look at someone and you you're jealous of their position or whatever like i know there's there's so many so many so many people that would kill to do what i'm doing now for christian mm-hmm. yeah and but it's like if you look at like that type of person and you're like, or you're jealous and it's like, Oh, but that's only because of this, because of that. It's, you know, don't think of yourself as like, that's the special guy or, or girl that isn't capable because your life is like this or like that or like mm-hmm. that. It, because everyone starts from, from somewhere <clears throat> without any, you know, there's only very, very lucky few that like literally enter life and are born into all of this success yeah. and wealth and all like, but typically everyone starts like starts off in normal fucking life. And it's like, mm-hmm. you don't know how things are going to work out. You, yeah. Like even when I sent the guy a message up to it, when we got the text from Christian, I don't, yeah. I never thought that I would be doing this right now. And it's like, your life just plays out the way it plays out. But yeah. if you just stay on top of yourself and if you know you want to do something with it, like you'll make the right decisions. Yeah. And that's when those small wins come in. And yeah. over time, just, you know, everything falls into place. It, over time. it does, you know, and you're going to fuck up. You're going to make mistakes and all this. And that's okay. You know, and, and like I think whatever you do, but you, you decide to work for yourself and embark on this journey that's not very common for people to embark mm-hmm. on. It's like, I don't know, like it, you need to throw yourself in the fucking deep end sometimes and you need to fuck up and you need to, you learn the most the times you are literally broke as fuck. Like you've got nothing and you can't even afford a bottle of water kind of thing up to the point where everything goes fantastic or you, or you have like feedback from people, whatever it's like you learn the most valuable things during these times. I think they mm-hmm. shape you and they, they just help you. They just, force you to grow. Yeah. Hundred yeah. percent. Really, like, there's no you can't go back. After right. Yeah. Either you, know? you give up or you fucking work harder. Yeah. It's it's literally that, that that's the one decision that you can I, always make. I think so many people can relate to this right now. Listen, even myself, like hearing you yeah. say that, <clears throat> dude. I used to edit photos in a porta potty. Yeah. At work, because that was the only free time I had, and I was yeah. alone, and it's no crazy. one could yell at me for being on my phone. Yeah. So I'd literally sit there, put the seat down, smell like fucking shit obviously yeah. i'm just sitting on my phone in lightroom editing yeah. on my lunch break banging on the door yeah. but like i didn't i didn't hear any noises outside because i was so focused yeah. and i was like oh, i gotta get a photo out today like mm-hmm. i didn't have time because i worked a full-time job so yeah. i made the time yeah so like this is gonna sound fucked up but like i don't like people reach out to me saying how like they're in this situation this situation 
And I'm almost like, you got to just make it work. Like you can't, the that's cards it. you're dealt, you're dealt. And you have mm -hmm. to just do what you can with that hand. Yeah. Like, that's it. That, that, don't like, make excuses. It. Just try to work with what you got, yeah. where you are, yeah. and with what do you have. You can't change. You can't change where you're at in this very moment right no. here. You no. can't go back and change anything. You can't tell the future. Oh. All you can do is take the point where you're at right, right now, and then <clears throat> make steps in the right yeah. direction. Use what you have, where you are, and yeah. the people around you, and just do whatever you have to do. People yeah. who make excuses are the ones that never amount to anything. Yeah. How did you, so how did you transition then? So Marine got the Alphalete sponsorship. <coughs> did you guys start working full time then? Where did Alphalete and, and Houston come to the picture? It, it, it came in, we got back from the trip. We were very tired. And, but after a couple of days, um, Marion sent me a text, um, basically saying that he, how do you sponsor it? And, you know, he wanted to fly to, to Texas to meet him and hang out and just get, you know, just get introduced, mm -hmm. um, as part of the team. And, uh, he very surprisingly asked me to come with him because there was also there, he knew about not just Christian, but also about Nick bear and Austin and yeah. stuff. So he wanted yeah. to just do, make it this, this thing. And he, I like a couple of days after we got back, I got a text asking if I want to go on another trip to, to the U S and, but yeah. meet him, meet Christian. I was like, well, shit. Yeah. yeah. Of course. Like sick. <laughs> so, so then that was actually <clears throat> like another, the first time I, would, I didn't feel anxious necessarily, but I was like nervous. To tell my, I was like walking down, I'm about to have dinner with my parents. I remember sitting down, I was like, hey, man, like, so I'm going to be gone again, like, <laughs> like right away. And so, so how do I tell my parents, like, as a guy who's never done anything, not even go out on the weekends and stuff, always at home, or like, literally, to yeah. now, I, I just went to like halfway across the world. And yeah. I'm about to go back to the other half now, like, to were, hang out. Were like, they happy for you? Do they understand what you were doing? They're very happy and understanding, but, but or supporting, not necessarily understanding in the beginning, because how do you explain to your parents that you're not going to go to school anymore and, no. and that like you're, you're going to film it much? <clears throat> you're going to film YouTube videos, right? Yeah, I'm going to like what? What are you going to do? Are what you getting mean? paid right now? Like at this at this moment? Yeah. Um, not now. I'm saying like. At the, <laughs> oh, at the, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, know you're I was like, yeah, of course. <laughs> no, so when you were going to Houston. So at that point, no. So like, damn, really? So, still? No, so yeah, but Jeez. he because he still wanted to, obviously, but. <laughs> Yeah, it was just like but the opportunity. Yeah, the opportunity there. Uh, man, this, this I, is so, like, I feel like you just proved yourself in that last you, trip. How do you like? Yeah, but it was, it was like, how do you just like decline? You know what I mean? Like, I had no clue what was happening. Like Damn. with my life at that moment, I was so I remember telling my parents. Well, how were really you? Like, how were you affording? It? Was he paying? He was for paying. For, he was paying for. Okay, it. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. He was paying for it, and like that. That was wow. one thing. I didn't have to worry was about all the costs and like nothing, mm -hmm. bro. And did, that was a, that was a great trip. Twenty. So your priority was literally just work. Huh? 2017 was the 2017. year that you came to Houston for the first time. For the first time, saw Alphalete Gym to meet Christian. To meet Christian and to see the gym. It was the very first Alphalete Gym. The box, like the box gym with the blue walls. No, no, the one after that. Okay, yeah. So that was the CG Fitness Gym. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. And then the Alphalete Gym. The first one was on Summer Park Drive. Um, and holy shit, I did. I didn't know that when we met Christian. I remember he because we were. I think he was upstairs and we were already in his house and we met Heidi and. Uh, Lawrence, who was a videographer in 2017, mm -hmm. yeah. um, and and when he came walking down, I, I, I felt so strange because like, well, man, like there he is, yeah. you know. What and this was CG like before CG was like you know yeah. huge, yeah. but yeah. you're like whoa, yeah, that's crazy. There he is. Yeah, and um, I, it was weird because he knew who I was. That was weird to me. Oh my god, yeah. I was like, that's so strange. You have had moments like that, that's right? So, so cool. crazy, and it, it, it was. Good because we stayed in, in Houston for a couple of days. Christian was like, I think two weeks out at this point from a show. Damn. So he felt so like you were crap. getting content. He felt like crap, but it was you know for Ryan was good because like CG looked crazy. Yeah, he was probably and, down know, to shoot. For the content he was so good. good. Yeah. Um, and I remember when I was there, it was um, we went to Austin after a couple of days, but I was like, man, like I really miss like the Alphalete like gym and stuff. I miss the vibe, and it, it felt so cool to to be to be there. Mm -hmm. And I was. Even like kind of telling myself, I was like, man, I don't think I want to leave this place. There's something about it I don't want to. That was to trip go. one. That was you're trip like, one. And you've been all around the Europe, you've been all around the world. But yeah. when you came mm -hmm. to Houston, you're like, whoa, like, this yeah. might be the place. Yeah, well, not even that. It wasn't. Well, this might be the place I want. It was more so like I, I just didn't want to go, and I just wanted to be around these people all the time. Yeah. And wow. I, when we got back from that trip, we stayed in Texas for two weeks. That was when everything, mm -hmm. I guess, really started to change because then um, a week later, I get a text from Christian asking if I wanted to come back to Houston. 
to help him film in the final week of summer shredding 2017. So like, because he was doing this event at the Alphalee gym, mm-hmm. it wasn't even a show back then, bro. It was just like an event, an event. Yeah. and like a meetup kind of thing and activities. And I was there in that week to film on last vlog, I think. And then the video for the f- that day, the summer yeah. shredding. And uh, yeah, that just, that changed everything. That changed so cool. And then we just naturally grew. We started, I started coming back more in 2018. I did the first summer shredding, like the whole series ever. And so between 2017, and 2018, you transitioned then from working with Mariah more often to working for Christian straight up. Yeah. So you flew here by yourself then <clears throat> yes. without Mariah. Yes. Well, so you, how, how do you handle that? Like now Very, you, you Mariah, were Mariah, Christian now there's, n- there's no guy that's, that w- would be more supporting than Mariah in that respect. Mm-hmm. He understood. You I there. If there was anyone, if there was one person in this world who was very much like, business first like Mm -hmm. like, you know you need to grow now it was it's him because he told me straight up was like man if i have an opportunity to work with another videographer that offers services it's like way better than you no disrespect (laughs) i love you but also like i'm gonna go with him like not gonna lie but like and that i i love that mindset so much dude because before that That when was crazy before i was 18 (laughs) and i was insecure and i was overweight and i was fat i like yeah i wouldn't be able to handle that point of view Mm -hmm. wow because i would be so yeah. Insecure and like you know what I mean, right. but it's the reality is, man. You know what? Like business, f- important. Like if, yeah, yeah. It, it, Damn. It, if you're young, you're eight, 19 years old, twenty. Like someone's gonna ask you to fly to U.S. to do all these things, you're gonna fucking say yes. Yeah. Like he was very supportive. Wow. I think what you said about how you came to Houston and like you didn't want to leave, you felt like that's literally what me and Harry experienced. Yeah. And everyone in this house and yeah, no, everyone we know, honestly, yeah, for real, it's yeah. like. Something you can't it. explain it, bro. You can't but explain but it. I was talking with I was talking with someone different. about this yesterday. It's, it's not even it's not Houston. Texas is dope. The weather's dope. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But it's yeah. it's Alphalete. It's, it's the people. It's, it's, yeah. it's the it's environment. The it's, yeah, yeah. It's that's what it is, man. That's it's not why, Texas, the state. That, right. That's yeah. why. I mean, yeah. That, that's why people freaking love it here. It's so because weird, it's just, There's something so because what captivating. You, yeah, like what you felt is what I felt the first time I came here. What Harry felt the first time he came here. And then you you go back home. I remember going back home, and I was like, fuck. I don't yeah. go back. I was like, yeah. dude, yeah. I have to be there. Like, that's yeah. where my life is going to yeah. change if I move there and I stay there. It was, I mean, for me, and we can, <laughs> I actually do want to get into your history with Nabil specifically, but for me, like, it was a CG summer shredding video that got me out of my funk where I was working like 18 hour days for this company and I was just, my, my health went to shit. Yeah. And it was a CG video, it's classic, just CG thumbnail where I was like, all right, let's like, <laughs> click on that. And, and that yeah. spiraled into, eventually me signing up for summer shredding. So it was like, it was y'all's video that I a hundred percent attribute to being sitting here right now. That was oh, that's me too. Without a doubt. Yeah. That's so crazy. I remember uh, meeting you last year at summer shredding class. Yeah. yeah was, when I used to compete, I used to watch all the summer shredding videos on, uh, on the treadmill every day. That's mm-hmm. so crazy. Yep. Christians, Charlie's. And so then weird. that's yeah. another reason why I picked up a camera. Well, not, I picked up a camera before that, but I got into the more like cinematic type videos from watching Christian's videos and you're, the montages and stuff. For real? Wow, that's, Dude, 100%, that's bro. weird. That's so sick. And then I used to tell my friends and all the time, I was like, my goal is to be wow. someone's, na- to be someone's Nabil. That's so, oh man, like, that was my so goal. Crazy. Was to, I want to be someone's Nabil. Like I want to be yeah, their guy, like guy. their, their right hand man who's like yeah, walking around with and them. And that's what you're doing right now. And bro. now I'm um, Marco's Nabil. But yeah. now people are saying like, I want to be someone's LT, which is, yeah. pff, it's weird, like, right? that's, that's where like my head explodes. Cause yeah. I'm like, how did that happen so right. fast? Where I was, it happens fast, bro. I was looking to be someone like you, and now people are looking to be yeah. someone like me. And yeah. It just happens so, so fast. You know, I'm experiencing that right now. Oh, yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's when crazy, you bro. say that, that that's weird. Like that's yeah. so weird because <clears throat> I I'll never think about like I don't know it, it, the the feeling of when I pick up a camera has always been the fucking same. Yeah, since I first started, it's like okay, you're here to do with it. You're like you're your job, whatever. Like, you're gonna try and make something cool. Like, you know, that was, it, it wasn't even, I'm going to do that. Like, I didn't yeah, think it was just, too technical. Yeah. I was just, I want to make something yeah. cool. Just doing what you love. You know, just, yeah. yeah. And just let, let it translate itself into whatever it is that you're going to make. And then, I don't know, like over time, like things just unravel the way they, they do. And it's, I, I, I never expected any of no, them. Yeah. Nothing was That's planned. the thing. Like, yeah. There, there is, there was no blueprint. It was never like, oh, no. I'm going to go film summer shredding for Christian. And then. Yeah. This is gonna happen. This you were just like, yeah. am I gonna go? Yes. Oh, are you filming? Yes. And it was just day by day, week by week. Yeah. yeah. Things are happening because we're present here. Yeah. We're here. We're doing things. That's why more opportunities keep coming out of nowhere. Because yeah. I'm we're I'm, here putting I the work. I really want to know what, because when we talk to anybody, 
you know, regardless of their success in the past, regardless of where they're at right now, they always have aspirations for more. They're not like, not to say the line, but like, they're not satisfied. Like yeah. they're like, yo, I'm, this is dope, but like I have other goals. What mm-hmm. are the things that you want to accomplish? Like personally, professionally, do you like, would you ever have aspirations to like film a movie or anything crazy like that? Yeah, I have always dreamt about doing a movie one day. Um, or at least being involved in like a like a sick like a major like mm-hmm. yeah no that's always been a like some Hollywood a, shit yeah that's always yeah. been an aspiration yeah. like just because I think it'd be so interesting and um but it, like because I'm so used to working by myself like obviously when you look at these bigger productions it's always a, it's so such a big team I, I want mm-hmm. to know what what it's like and stuff but like that would just be a very cool thing to experience one day yeah. what would you want to do specifically on set <sighs> I would say DP. And I don't know director, what that means. DOP, just director <laughs> yeah. So you're like in charge of, like, you're in charge of just yeah, just, just the registration of everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's that's so dope. Yeah, that'd be cool because then I don't know, and I that's funny because every single time I'm film, like I almost approach it as if I'm looking at a movie trailer. Mm-hmm. Whatever it is I'm filming, I'm like, am I looking at a movie trailer? And if not, like, how can I make it look like one? That kind makes of a lot of sense. Like that, that's what it feels so, like. It's. Yeah, and that by the on the flip side, that doesn't fucking stop ever. So I look yeah. at everything as if you know, always in in frames, and but because it, it has literally consumed my whole life, and I I love it, and I would never even think about. I have no clue what else I would be doing if it wasn't this. Yeah. So and it, it happened by total accident, but it's I have no clue what else is out there for me. <laughs> so when ever since you started working with Marine, has it been mostly like ninety percent fitness content from there out, or like do you do weddings or anything side gigs? Yeah, I did, I did. I did all kinds of stuff, especially back, back then because um, those weddings and 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 like any, like any corporate things that was mm-hmm. where I would charge for. Mm-hmm. Um, do like you do like car car videos and stuff too, right? Yeah. So there was a. a um, an organization that's in the Netherlands that they organize all these rallies and stuff. So, um, they were looking for a content, uh, team essentially. And they, a lot of people, ta- it was a, f- a Facebook post. A lot of people tagged me in that. And then we got in touch. And that's also when I started to learn that I, I love doing automotive stuff too. Mm-hmm. So it was mainly, mainly those like that would be like the corporate side of things, the clients and also weddings. Um, but whenever I could and an opportunity would rise up to film with Marine, then I would. Like, and that would be mm-hmm. like the, the fun side of things. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it, at this point it was literally just like, yeah, my life. So what's like the main thing, what's like the main work you're doing when you're not with Christian? What's the main, Corp- what's your main thing you're shooting? The main thing is still corporate stuff back yeah. at home. Yeah. yeah. If, if they're, especially now, because the last two years have been really out of the ordinary because of the pandemic. And so mm-hmm. any oh, travel yeah. related things were canceled instantly. Dude, it was terrible. And it was, that's when corporate started becoming like, more prominent again because mm-hmm. well that was literally the only way to make what's an example video. of like a corporate video that you do uh, i mean there's like like rubber manufacturers he just sounds so he just just think rubber. about it. he sounds so like you can tell when you start thinking about that you're just like huh. yeah it's you know like, so like it's not like, the passion so you look at those jobs that's just like it's just a fucking paycheck like well at the end of the day it is yeah but but at the same time it's like you still approach it from a passion side like passion perspective but yeah. they're not, just simply not I like that no 100%. You know, they're, they're not as as exciting and, yeah. and you'll have really fun clients sometimes and it'll, it will make the day of shooting more fun mm-hmm. but at the end of the day how, it's how fun no, i know a rubber i know manufacturing video honestly, honestly these people are pretty sick it's like really? it's these i know exactly what you're talking about these people are we're pretty, like that honestly is a cool client like and I, the, the guy who's responsible for marketing is, is someone i can get along with really well so like All that right, cool like yeah. that makes it more fun you kind of you you know you make the project fun kind of thing yeah. but you and anyone will have this in any industry you'll have like fun clients, you'll have like yeah. annoying clients back, like whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went That's through that too. I, I went through a period where like I was posting on my IG and like nothing matched. I was doing like an engagement, then I was like shooting a car, then I was shooting like yeah. a nightclub. And I felt, yeah, I like, was doing like a nightclub. Oh, yeah. And I felt lost. I'm like, <laughs> what am I? Like, what, what type well, you're of you're sharpening am your I? sword, bro. You're, you're getting looking it. back. Yes, I was gaining experience and stuff, but yeah. I wasn't passionate about it. So no. I'm actually happy that the full fitness niche worked out for me. Yeah. Because that, yeah, that yeah. is actually what I. I'm passionate about yeah, and I used to do it for fun. I used to do gym shoots for fun with my friends. Like it was never work to me. No. And now it's work. And it's, so for it's Joe, awesome. for Joe, I mean, you've identified the <clears throat> David Lade shoot as being like sort of like a trans, like transformational, like a, a springboard, putting you on the map type deal a little yeah. bit. But just for myself, it was, right. it was like monumental for me personally. Cause that's when I was like, Whoa, did, was, did, like, was there ever a project that you did that, that you think was the most influential or impactful? Um, I think, um, well, that's a very good question. Man. It's hard. 
I guess if, if I would say the first summer shredding classic uh, video that we did was the most impactful to me. Mm -hmm. The very first one. The very first one because this was the first time there was a, in 2017 is when I first came and we did the summer, the event and that's when Christian even said to me, man, I got to do this bigger and better next year. Like maybe I, I just gonna come up with my own show, and he he fucking did it just that. <laughs> just that next 20, year. 2018 <laughs> was the first so summer crazy. shredding classic and that's actually that's crazy. When we made that show day video, I. That's crazy. I would let people watch it when I was done, and everyone's fucking crying, bro. Yeah. And I, that was like that's when it really. And that was me. like, oh, yeah. like I was sitting right there, you know. And I was like, okay, well, like the storytelling within this, and but it's not me; it's literally the fucking people that came to the Summer Shine Classic and just fucking shared it. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. and it, it's yeah. and it, it was, so, was such an honor to just to have them tell that story and share it with me and for me to put it out to the world. And then you see the, the reactions in the fucking comments. And I was like, whoa, this is so much more than just shooting YouTube. You, you had no idea when you were making it that that was the impact it was going to make. Or who, no. did you sort of know in the back of your head, like, all right, this could change people's lives. It could because the, you, you start getting comments from people that get inspired and they bought, they buy a camera. You yeah. know, it's, it's crazy. And it's literally as simple as <clears> I remember uh, the amount of DMs that I would get from, hey man, you inspired me to buy a camera and get started in this, and like, what software should I get, and like, what yeah. lens, what equipment <laughs> should I get, and like, this and this. <laughs> and it's like, the f it was also crazy when I get tagged in this one post one day, and lit someone made a YouTube video, and it was literally called um, "How to Shoot a Nabil Style Fitness Edit Tutorial." And it, I watched and I was like, oh, this has got to be some fucking joke. But it, it was like a dead ass. <laughs> how does Nabil shoot his videos? And like diving down. into the breakdown of oh, everything. Wow. And I was like, man, like we're doing videos that like have such an impact that people are going to think about this and yeah. like make a video. Like a, yeah. Whole career. You like, made a whole that's style. Weird. Like yeah. you made a whole like no, you, you, trend. Like, you did. And you, I also, a big part of the impact as well was when. You should have seen my dad's fucking face when I said, oh, I'm going to shoot YouTube videos. <laughs> Stare, he didn't even have any expression. He just stared at me. Like, did he even understand what that means? I, you know, he, obviously, he, did, he didn't. He knew what YouTube was, but he was like, you're going to give up school, shoot some fucking YouTube videos. With who? I was like, with Mariah. Do you even know this guy? I was like, oh, not really. <laughs> but we're going to fly around. How'd you meet him? Yeah, through the internet. It's like, right. what? Like, right. No, it sounds, but, my parents still don't really understand what they, the fuck I do. Mine, so after the summer shredding, well, not even, even before the summer shredding, they, they did because they would keep up with the videos and they would read. The, my dad would always call me, read the comments. Uh, he'd read like, the comments are you seeing you? what people are saying about you? <laughs> that's, like, special, that's and he, 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 since then, 2017, he would never miss any video. You yeah. know, if I wasn't in, Would he comment too? Always. And <laughs> yeah. Even when I was in, uh, when, every time I would come home, I wouldn't be in the States again. And mm -hmm. he would always ask me on a regular, like every week, like, oh, have you heard from Christian? When are you going back? Like this. Uh -huh. and, you know, so yeah. involved. Was, yeah, that, that's, it, awesome. that's the impact, you know? Once, yeah, once you see that you're, like, you know, my son is impacting people, like mm -hmm. doing yeah. what he loves. Yeah. And, like, that's when it's, you can't wrap your head around that. Like, no. my parents still really don't understand what the fuck I do. Like, they know I do photography videography but they don't know who christian guzman is they don't know who no they, they don't know what alpha land is they don't know the impact yeah. that it had on me yeah they think it's just a gym yeah and it's yeah. it's it's tough for people you can't to, really explain it yeah you can't you, really you explain, can't it. explain it you have to let like the product do the talking mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying yeah that's that's it that's literally it yeah because sometimes my some of my friends have no idea yeah you know, what if people that haven't seen in a long time, they're like, so what is it exactly that you do these things? <laughs> yeah. I just, I just went home and then people, like, yeah. yeah. It's, do you yeah. ever just not even want to talk about it because you know that it's sort of like talking? I don't know how to explain well, it. I just, I just say, sometimes it's, it's just, I'm like, oh, I, I make videos now. And then you, you can just see that they have so many questions, <laughs> but, <laughs> you, but, but like <laughs> they, they, they can tell by my face that I'm really not about to get into yeah. this. And then they're like, oh, well, cool. cool, man. Like, <laughs> yeah. Traveling a lot, like, well, yeah, you know, yeah. It's a good yeah. part of the job. Right? The traveling and meeting people. Mm -hmm. It's it's hard to explain like how much Alpha Alpha Land Christian like mean to all of us. Yeah, because it, it it's such a transitional part of our lives. Like yeah. coming here, meeting these people, and yeah. coming to Texas in general the, is just the thing that I always like to think about is like obviously Christian was inspired by people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he talks about all the time, and and Christian inspired us all to some degree, or let's just say you, and you inspired Joe to some degree, and Joe is inspiring other kids to some degrees, and all yeah. this stemmed from like, well, you can always go up the tree and find who yeah. it is, but like, but like yeah. Christian specifically, and all the different careers that he's made, just, yeah. just from doing, and you too, the videos that you guys made brought so many people, not only here, but just doing this now full time yeah. for yeah. themselves. Oh yeah. And, and that's just a crazy thing to think about.
Yeah. No, it's insane. And and the thing is, the people that are listening right now, you might not be there just yet, but but you got to pick up that camera for that first time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And exactly. before you know it, you're gonna be. This is like you know. No, this is Gen one, Gen two. Yeah. You're aspiring <clears throat> Gen three, like. But it's you, it's like that. That's very, you know, obviously photography, filmmaking related, but also it, for me, I that. I have no idea why or how this has played out the way it has. I was never even supposed to touch a fucking camera. It's like, but because I did and gave me that first taste and I then was like, oh, I want to give this a shot. But that re- almost didn't happen. So mm-hmm. even if, if you don't like, it's not, it's po- like totally okay. If you're not sure what you want, you might not even have to like cross paths with this one thing that you're supposed to be doing or that you're going to fall in love with. Yeah. But I think the exciting part about that is you get to wake up every day like with an open mind and literally allow yourself to get excited about something mm-hmm. instead of just like, well, if you're going to suppress that feeling by just thinking, I don't know what the fuck I'm going to do. Like it doesn't yeah. fucking matter. It doesn't matter how old you are. It's like you might just be in for a fucking treat and like, yeah, you might love it. Get in touch with this one thing that it's going to absolutely consume you, but it's, yeah. yeah, I don't know. You'll, you'll know. And even if you don't know, that's fine because you just get to wake up every day excited for, you know, trying out different things. Yeah. It's yeah. all perspective. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I mean, that's for sure. You hear it all the time, but it's like, tr- try new things. Yeah. If you're unsure, try new things. Cause you don't, you didn't know that you'd love photography until you picked it up for the first time. Yeah. So it's like, if y'all are thinking, and I'm not just saying this in a yeah. fitness. Yeah. Not even just photography. Yeah. Or anything, just anything. Any, anything. Just yeah. try it. Anything, you, yeah. If you hate it, don't ever do it again, but you don't know <laughs> until you try it. And exactly. travel, bro. I, I tell everybody like, Go somewhere, mm-hmm. yeah. Fucking go somewhere. For like the money you're gonna spend the weekend at the bar, you could have got a plane ticket, and then went somewhere even for a day. Just go meet people, connect, and network. Yeah. Send that Do message. Something. Send that message like you send. You wake up every day. Send message, yeah. yeah. Send DMs. But if you wake up every day and just go to the same job, the same people, and just yeah. your life is just a rotation, and it's just like nothing's ever gonna change. You have to do something that's gonna at least get a foot in the door somewhere yeah. where you want to be. That's like. It, 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 Finding people that kind of share that mindset, you know yeah. what I mean? Like mm-hmm. the squad That's of people so that big. you have here in Houston. So big. There's yeah. n- honestly, and and I, the French that like the friend, the friends, <laughs> French friendship, the French people, the friendship and friends. <laughs> yeah. Um, that I have back home, there's a really just a, a, a little squad really that I, mm-hmm. I really hang out with, and yeah. it, it, my most amazing memories I you know I have with these people, and it's. I love them. It's like, I will do anything for them. And that's, a, they're also a huge motivation of like why I really want to try and create something with my life here. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's the people that I love, but it, it's a different mindset when you're with people here that are all doing their own thing. And literally I was talking about this with a friend of mine in the gym, how everyone has literally flourished so much like comparing to 2017 where everybody was up to now is standing in alpha land gym one out of three Mm -hmm. in this massive building. And Mm -hmm. all of the the people in that circle that I met there in 2017, they've all built something and they're all fucking like going. They all evolved like with the gym. And they're now even not in like evolving now, bro. Everyone's growing so rapidly and everyone's really leveled up, just literally leveled the fuck up. And, And that, is so powerful. Do you, I feel like that's, I, f- I feel like you guys were still early in YouTube fitness, Instagram fitness, whatever that is. I think yeah. there's so much opportunity right now, especially mm-hmm. with all the brands that are sponsoring yeah. all dude, like right now, it's like you can make a career, especially as a it, creator. Yeah. The, yeah. the opportunities for Everyone's creators for are a video infinite right now. Right now. Like, the industry is so accessible. It's so now. accessible. Everybody listening to this, you could pick up a camera YouTube university yourself for, for however many months come yeah. to summer shredding, start yeah. filming everything, start shaking hands and you could have a career in eight months. You'd be working for someone full time. You might have to work for free for a month, yeah. for two months. Yeah. Prove your work. That's what I was going to say. Don't try to fill shoes. Don't try to like step on toes. Don't try to think you're going to come in and like take, do your own, take your own route. Become the first you, you yeah. know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. I say it all the time. Like don't try to be the next LT, become the first you. Do something different. Do something that's yourself. Yeah. Throw Brand your yourself, bro. Like, and that's what's going to separate you. That's what's going to make you stand out. That's what's going to get you a, a job. And then people are going to look up to you and want to take your spot. Yeah. Damn. You don't, you don't do a whole lot of personal branding yourself, do you? Not at all. Is that like how you prefer it? Because I know Joe hates being in front of the camera. Like, but he's. Well, I just yeah. started. You're getting used to it. Like, is there a reason that you don't, you know, sell programs or. Well, I, 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 I'm, I've started doing that uh, really in the last year. Um, 
but not even actively. It's mainly just because I, and this is um, not necessarily a good thing. Like I should probably like, work on this, but I really approach my life every day, but not thinking about the fact that I'm doing it as a profession. Mm-hmm. It, like I just see it. Okay. That's my life. And this is what I'm doing. And, and because of that, I treat it as if it literally is just my normal and it is my normal quote unquote life, but I don't think about it with like, Oh, I have to promote this or like this and this because so, well, the inst- like I post some things on Instagram, like, you know, I've been trying to do that more now, but like the work speaks for itself and, and that mm-hmm. just kind of does its thing. But what I don't think about is, okay, man, I need to like push myself out there more. Like, cause everything for like, I've been really blessed to everything that has, that I've been in contact with, like with and the things I've done, like they've just crossed my path. You know, I, I never had to like do anything actively almost. And it, like things just happened to play out the way they played out. And therefore I'm not like even thinking about like my personal brand as much because I'm mm-hmm. always like, I need to focus on other people. I'm <clears throat> like, th- this is what I need to do. I need to finish this. Okay. Boom. Next video, next video. And, mm-hmm. and then the work just speaks for itself and you create a brand. For sure. Like, for sure. Definitely. And there's definitely a, a, a community that, that is that I built now at this point, but mm-hmm. not actively. And I don't view it mm-hmm. as such, mm-hmm. but I did just start to obviously use sell presets and stuff to help mm-hmm. people out and, and, and see if that it can inspire them a little bit more and all this. And, um, I also have, I, this was the first time I started explaining things was I have like two videos on, on sound design cool. on a, a creator platform. It's called creator classes from a buddy, Mike. He built the whole thing and has like all these creators on there. Like all these filmmakers, photographers. Let's throw that in the in the yeah. bio, the, yeah. the the description. If you guys can check that out, if yeah. You want. It's it's, and he asked me if I wanted to be the teacher for sound design, which was cool. Oh, yeah. So th- like that's, that's awesome. not, but that's like his platform. So it's not mm-hmm. necessarily I am actively selling, but it gives you a taste, yeah. right? Like you might have done that. You might like, well, this is really dope. I want to make a master class, exactly. Yeah. And I want to, yeah, because you should. if you could do it better, if there's one thing I've learned is. It's it's just I want to make something that is valuable to people that people can take something away from. I want to just have something on this earth that can be, be you, meaningful. You, d- you do, but it, you but do it's right like, now. But I want I know I've, I want to do more. You know I know I can do. I I want to because I don't know that I f- I just feel that responsibility in a way because <clears throat> I mean I YouTube was everything to me when I wanted to learn anything, like anything about videography and stuff and even losing weight and you know what I mean? And there's a lot of things that I've learned that the YouTube hasn't taught me just also in life in general that that I I want to find a way to package that and and give it out to people for value. You know what I mean? And podcast, it's this, it's it's, it's it's stuff like this too, but literally why we created this. Yeah. I just want to keep doing what I'm doing, man. And I I don't want to sound corny, but like you're, your legacy is loading. Like every day, it you're is. you're adding to your legacy. Yeah, it is. That, that was that was kind of funny. <laughs> but you're like every day these little shoots you do every day. Like tonight, you said you're editing all night. Yeah, you're waking up like, like this is all part of your legacy. Like it is. when it's all said and done, like gonna look back like bro, no. nobody had that worth ethic like Nabil. I just that want- dude was a machine, and like his his work showed for it. He didn't even need to brand himself. It, it was just it, yeah. it, you could just. It's crazy. The work though. spoke for itself. Like I want to, like what you know, there's gonna be a day you're not here anymore. Like how what are be, what are you gonna leave behind for people to mm-hmm. take to get mm-hmm. that first impression from? Yeah, you know, is it gonna be? Oh, this is cool. This is valuable. And like he really did something, and like he had a good life, and you know, that's what I want to ultimately spread as well. You know, it's that's that that's huge. And I, it's but things are changing so rapidly in our industry now too that you know. Your, my approach is going to change. You know, well, things yeah, can think about TikTok. None of us are on TikTok. Yeah, I made one and, today. Actually, you yeah. made one today, but yeah. like that's the that's the thing. Got like, him. Yeah. like that's that's launching careers. Like it is it, this yeah. whole this era of, of social yeah. media is just. I don't get it, bro. It's, <laughs> it's actually I, scary, I don't bro. knock it's, anyone. It's, like if it, someone wants to though. post seven TikToks a day, like go for it. I, Fuck I, it. Like you, no, like but it, but just it's especially the people that go to the Alpha League gym when you ask. And sometimes they'll they'll come say what's up and stuff, and you'll have mm-hmm. a conversation. You ask them what they're doing, and ninety percent is oh, you know, I'm on TikTok or I'm on Instagram, and like, yeah, you know, I do this I, online coaching. Online, everything yeah. is fucking. Online. No one, no one says anything different. Like they're always online somehow doing something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, whether it be because if they weren't, they wouldn't be where they are right there. Yeah, exactly. So it's it's, it's changing, man. Our our generations are like, yeah. man, yeah, it's crazy. Dude, IG is so powerful, do you, bro. Do you guys consider yourselves influencers? No. No. Like you can, uh, it's one thing to say I make an impact, I influence, I but like, but you don't. Yeah, I don't consider myself an influencer whatsoever. Do you want to elaborate on that? 
I mean, I've just never seen myself as anything else other than just an Abil, you know, and I don't, because I, if I put a label on myself, the only label I want to put on myself is what I do for a living. And I'm, I can, I call myself a videographer. It's the only label I'll give myself because I don't know, Instagram or not, like in, if I'm an influencer in the real life, in, on, on social media, like I still go to the fucking same grocery stores, everyone else. And there I'm not an influencer. I don't get a fucking sourdough for free because my, <laughs> this is my like I'll fucking put it on my store. And, no, I pay for the goddamn thing, just like everybody yeah. else. And, and I don't like to change that label when I'm online. I'm the same Nabil as I am online as I'm offline. The only difference is I get to work with a fuck ton of amazing fucking people that have really put my name on the map and have allowed my page like to just be seen and get, like gain traction and you earned but it, I don't, I don't, but I don't, you, you I don't that treat shit, it as such, you know, it's p- people like, yeah, you have followers, but it's like they, I, all I did was just make videos and they've all come. Like, I don't, I haven't actively tried to get some. I've never actively tried to like it. it they just had, they just came, but the, I, I, the only difference, the only change that I've made was <laughs> I started doing English on Instagram. Like I stopped speaking Dutch on Instagram. And when I started doing that, my friends were like, "What the fuck is Nabil doing? It's yeah. cringy. It's corny." Yeah. But I, because I start, I started seeing this traction from all these people that I was working with and stuff, and, and no well, one, no one understood Dutch. I still wanted to like converse with yeah. them. Yeah. So it's yeah. like, okay, no, English it is. There's an absolute gem in there, which is your following has come, and you haven't been chasing a thing. No, You've just been it's, doing it's just your thing. there. You've been perfecting your craft. Yeah. You've been living life day by day, and and the following, like that's the thing. Like that's why we say don't chase the number because the numbers come when you're not chasing it yeah, yeah. That, that's, people will be like oh i want to be an influencer what do i do right what camera do i get what do i like how how should i do youtube how should i it's like but <laughs> what do you want you if, if, do if that is if that's if you want to get into into those things for that purpose of being an influencer is yeah. there's no such thing as being an influencer in my opinion you're called an influencer because you have an impact on people. The real reason you have an impact on people is because people like you and they're a fan of you. Yeah. How your, can people be, be a fan of you? Be yourself, be a master at your fucking craft or be really good at something, provide whatever value. it is, and then provide that value and like, and you gain traction, you gain a following. Mm-hmm. You gain a following, you have people that like you, that trust you. Yeah. If you say buy this because I think it's worth this, or this, or whatever, and then you can be like, oh, I trust you, I'm going to buy it. Boom, you've influenced someone to make that decision. But... Bro, I, a fuck ton of followers is not going to give you influence. No, facts. facts. Dude, most of the people we know There's that a have a fuck ton of followers they don't, have they're, they're zero not, They, they sell exactly. zero fucking t-shirts. They're for real. You know, it's I, like you can yes. have 500K and sell fucking zero t-shirts because I, no one gives I've fuck. seen it. I, I, I look, I look yeah, up to more people yeah. with less followers than the ones that have 300,000 followers. So literally like... I don't know. Like there's no such thing as becoming just, just if there's anything valuable you have to share, mm-hmm. you can digitize anything in this day and age as you should probably. So therefore document it and put it out to the world, see what you can yeah. offer to you know what I mean? Like offer something to the world. Yeah. Like things that, just kind of happen. Like, it, you yeah. know, and there's no step-by-step like it's blueprint weird. to follow to become an influencer. No, I'm there's none. There's none. The people ask me questions like, and I don't have an answer for them because I'm like, there's no right or wrong answer. You gotta just be yourself and yeah. people are gonna like you for you. And no that, one that's how the you're same gonna, path. That's how you're gonna build a following. You just yeah. keep showing your value. Like what do you bring to the table? Yeah. What what uh yeah. how do you inspire people? Yeah. What advice can you give? And people will like you for you. And yeah, that's it. saying like every single person we have on, if, if we were to ask all them what path they took, you could have every no single person the same path. Everyone has Not a different path. Close. Yeah. Even close. So like I can tell you, like you can you can explain where you came from, but it's like there's nothing within that conversation that's going to teach you to do the same thing mm-hmm. as me and end up in the same position because right. that's yeah. just not how you it can works. gain influence. Like I was definitely inspired by you, yeah, and yeah, your exactly. story you and, and, and your work. But then I, I realized I had to, I got to figure out my own path. Like I got to go a whole different journey. Like you went yeah. your journey. Yeah, you, you I can't fly around with Marine like he no. did. Yeah. <laughs> that's not gonna happen. Yeah, you know, like, I'm like hey Christian, uh, let me film your next vlog <laughs> just to show you what I can do. No, like that's that's not how it works. So I had to figure out my own path. Yeah, and uh. Yeah. yeah, and that's that's the beauty of life. You can't force that. it, bro. Right. It's just gonna happen. Yeah, and that's why, bro. I mean, that's why these conversations I think are so valuable because mm-hmm. you yeah. get to look behind the curtain, right? Yeah. Everyone knows, or they think they know Nabil. They think they know the guests that we have, but until you really get to talking with them, this is rounding my understanding of how you got to where you are and who and why you are the type mm-hmm. of person you are. Be- just from this hour that we've been talking, yeah, yeah. it's so valuable. Wow, well, it's every but everyone's story is valuable. You know, that's absolutely, the thing. yeah, absolutely. absolutely. You, you don't know like people. We, people look so ordinary every day, and and you know what? What's funny is you don't think ever think about like 
you don't look at someone and be like, I wonder what you've gone through today kind of thing. Like yeah. but everyone does mm-hmm. go through something and yeah. it's like, but also they've have, they have their own stories and very impactful days. I think this is a big takeaway is the days are going to have the most impact on our life. They're going to seem fucking ordinary when you're living them. Literally, mm-hmm. like if like in the moment you're living this fucking moment, you have no idea how much of an impact this is going to have. You don't know because it seems so ordinary. 15 fucking years down the line, you're going to think, holy fuck. Like, and that's what I have now. Yeah. You know, that fucking message seems so stupid. And even when he did respond, I was like, oh, this is fucking cool. But it didn't, in the moment, I was like, this, my life's going to change forever. Yeah. But it fucking did. Yeah. And I notice this now every single day. And I think back every single day about this. Because it's, you know, you, if you kind of tell yourself every once in a while that you could be living very impactful days and they seem so fucking ordinary just because they fucking are. in, in like in that moment. Right. But like allow yourself to be optimistic about the future kind of thing. That's a big takeaway. It's a gem. I love that. That was a fucking gem right there. That's a, I mean, that's a big thing. Live in the moment. St- like, you know, yeah. live in the moment because the future's, <laughs> I don't know. For me, there's nothing. Bright. The future's, yeah. Like, always bright. Yeah. Glass is always half full. You know? Yeah. No try what. to turn those bad days. Like, I'm not going to lie. Like, 2020, yeah, 2020 was probably like the worst year of my life. Like, mentally, yeah. I just went through a lot of shit and it was, it was like, it was a struggle every day and to like get out there and try to be creative and create, it wasn't even part of my, there was no room left for me to create because my brain was so but occupied by like yeah. nonsense I was dealing with in my life. But that's normal but too. That, that year like shaped me. Yeah, it does. I would not be here right now if I didn't go through what I went through that year. That's what I'm saying, man. Like it, you gotta be, you gotta go through fucking hell and back if, if you want to grow into the person that you ultimately want to become even if you don't realize who you want to become yet it's mm. you do grow in these moments and you don't for realize me, at the time for me that change that personal that change of personal development and the growth really came for me at the beginning of this year and because something will happen in your life and it, you don't know how much that's going to change you mm-hmm. but it fucking will yeah. it, you damn right you can fucking count on it it'll yeah. fucking shape you and you'll be a new i remember that january 3rd of this year was a day that my life like i knew instantly everything changed like different perspective on life and different just i don't know like it, it, these hardships i had if i didn't want to touch a fucking camera that was the first time in years that i didn't touch a camera mm-hmm. for over four days three yeah. or four days and I've it felt there. weird and but you're gonna have those moments like and that's okay mm-hmm. you know but but you like you are growing to become someone better more knowledge more, more life experience like i don't know like it, it can teach you a lot yeah, I'm so, sure I'm sure people yeah. listening to this are having that moment right now. Yeah. Right now they they think that they're 2020 Joe. They're like I don't have time for anything. I you know, I I don't want to I don't want to pick up a camera. Yeah. That yeah. could be you right now. But then but if, if you think about it, if this is that low point for you, it's it's only up from there. Yeah. 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 And just yeah, like listen to us and know that next time you experience that low po- that low point or like something fucking terrible happens like stop reflect and be like all right hold on this is part of Perfect. part of my journey this is going to shape me yeah i'm going to take i got to take something positive away from this i have to don't let me don't let this bring me down even more no. than i'm already at just stay optimistic yeah Fuck, man. i think another thing i take away from this podcast is it's really cool how you felt like you owed you owed them something yeah. you owed Mariah something because of the impact he had on your life yeah that i i i do you you have that impact that right now on people. Like That's you don't even realize it. Though. I promise you. That's so weird to me. People feel like they owe you everything. It's crazy to me because I still approach every day as if I owe someone something and no one owes me anything. So do I, bro. Like that's 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 the mindset. It's like no and Christian is the one who really taught me this too, is no one's gonna hold your fucking hand. You have to do it out. You know what I mean? So like every day I wake up and I'm like, Okay, I, I owe him a, a successful day of shooting, editing, mm-hmm. you know, good videos. I owe him the fact that people want to keep on watching these videos. Like it's every day you, you want to just not get comfortable, but fucking create something epic again and like yeah. impactful again. And stuff. Yeah. But at the, at the same time, like I feel no one owes me fucking anything because I'm not about to get handed shit. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Every day. Go take it. I mean, that's, that's passion, man. That's, that's yeah. truly passion. Yeah, exactly. That's, 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 that's why it's so important guys. Like whatever you do, in my opinion, what you do for a career you're doing for most of your life. If you're not passionate about what you're doing, 65, <clears throat> 75% of your life, you're going to, be dreading yeah. so find that thing that is lighting that fire so bright that you're willing to work 23 hours a day yeah to awesome. make shit happen <laughs> yeah. for real life of an editor for so, real. Yeah. 
I'm about to go edit all night. Yeah, <laughs> both these guys. Honestly, this is, I mean, this is, we're right about an, a little Where bit of an hour. Mighty. Shout out, Mighty. An hour nine. I mean, this is, this has been a fucking. Yeah. I, I, I like, don't want this to end. I, know, I don't want to keep talking. But I was just going to say, like, we need to do this again. I'm down. Yeah. It was, it was an honor being on here. It was, it was definitely true. I feel like people you, bro. learned a lot about you. I feel like I didn't know I any of did. this about you. But I also so. learned a lot about you guys. This too. is all you new to me. Yeah. yeah. Dude, I, that, the way you feel about them is literally how I feel about Harry and Dorian. I literally don't feel, feel like. You don't owe me shit. I feel like I owe them like everything that I'm getting now yeah. from. from yeah. Crazy, right? Bro, that's mutual. I, we've talked no, about I this. No, I know. We've, we spoke about it, but it's just so cool how like. You guys told me, like, if you come here, your life's going to change. Like, they believed in me. But I also believed in myself. That's why I I, yeah. I was like, fuck it, yeah, I'm going. Because yeah. I knew once I get there, I'm going to make shit happen. Yeah. But, and now we're all, it's just full circle. Like, Harry's doing good. Dorian's doing good. I'm doing good. We're still helping each other out. Just he helps me. Plan. I help him with stuff. He helps yeah. Dorian with stuff. And we don't, we don't, let, like full e- we circle, don't let each other slide, bro. No. I, I know if Someone's I start. down. Like, we're yeah. the two of us are there to pick them up and yeah. it's, yeah. it's that's, that's vice versa like if i started if i started lacking <laughs> i i i feel you guys breathing down my neck like i mm-hmm. can't joe yeah. and dorian are crushing right now i'm gonna keep fucking yeah. going yeah, i yeah, won't yeah. disappoint them you know what yeah. i'm saying yeah 100 yeah, yeah that's, that's that yeah you need if you have people that can hold you accountable for yeah. that but mm-hmm. like lift each other up whenever you know what i mean that's i needed that bro powerful, I, I had that dude i had that moment not that long ago i remember i pulled into the driveway and i just i had the i was a really bad day and i just laid down yeah. on my back yeah. And I just was looking up at this guy and yeah. Joe came out and he, I, he didn't even say anything. The first thing he said was like, bro, like remember this moment yeah, because it's going to change. Yeah. Things are going to change. Fuck yeah, man. It's fucking dope. I've been awesome. there. I've been there too. Yeah. I've been doing the floor in the driveway. Well, not necessarily. <laughs> you were around the corner of the other driveway. <laughs> I was in the backyard <laughs> yeah. of the old house. Yes. Fucking no. Yeah. That's yeah. A dark Dude, moments, but bro. that's, that's the thing, man. Like, like the, sometimes the hardest times are right before it gets so much better. Mm-hmm. It's like a test. It's almost like a fucking test where it's like, yeah. oh, you're about to do something big. Here's yeah. this monu- like monster fucking task. Can you get through that? Because yeah. if you can't, you don't deserve it. That's That's exactly it. how I feel. Like this this sort exactly. of thing is exactly what happened. So it, it's, it's so crazy that you say that because that's literally how I, mean, how I feel about this trip right now. Yeah. Like literally, because yeah. like to the point where I was even hes- not hesitant, yeah. but I just didn't feel good about coming to the U.S. because of what had happened. And, and I, I, I don't know, like, there was never going to be, there was not like no way I wasn't going to go, but I know it's felt different. And I knew mm-hmm. yeah. I was like, okay, well this has got to help me at least in some way. And from day one that I got here and just to, to see everyone again and the love that you feel and yeah. bro, like, holy crap. Time is crazy. So it's, that's literally exactly what I'm, what, what I'm feeling right now. I've never really experienced it that like that impactful and that that just strong. means bro you're right on the cusp of, of mm-hmm. something of, yeah, something's something coming big, bro. bro something yeah. big you're doing we're it right on to, now we're on to big things all of us though you remember yeah. that remember the old house yeah dude i was in the backyard like crying my eyes out i'm talking like you thought you made the biggest mistake i was of your like life. i was like on, on the floor like crying i couldn't yeah. stop crying i'm like i fucked up yeah. i was going to shoot my ex-girlfriend like I'm like, I, I fucked my life up. Like, things weren't working out here. He didn't have a car. He was sleeping no in, car. He was sleeping in like, a house with four dudes, five dudes. Like, then, like, <laughs> literally, like, it was, like, the week or two after. That's when the whole Marco opportunity came about. Yeah. And, like, now oh, yeah, man. it speaks for itself. Like, that's awesome. Where that's taking me. And yeah, if I would have gave up there, then I wouldn't be here right now. You know yeah. what I'm trying to say? So yeah. you got to get through those hard moments and just accept them for what they are. Yeah. But don't, don't let it bring you down more. Mm. Find a way to take it and learn from it and come out stronger. Damn, I feel like yeah, I feel like I feel heavy, bro. I'm like in my bag right now. Let's go get McDonald's, yeah. Jeez, fitness. No, definitely not getting McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> I should get Whataburger again. <clears throat> I'll bring some feet, bro. Appreciate Shout it. For real. Thank you for coming. Hey, on, guys, bro. it was a fucking honor, man. Absolute honor, yeah, bro. I really appreciate it. Um, this is the greatest podcast of all time. This is gonna, yeah, bro. This, I, want, this I hope awesome. everyone sees this and makes it to the end. If you made it all the way to the end, oh, what do we say? Drop a battery emoji, bro. If you made it to the end, let us know, guys. Like. Let us know some of those lows you've had, some of those the highs you've had, and, and share your experiences. So, because yeah. we want to engage with you, we want to like have the, yeah. if, this. If you're watching this, comment anything, even if it's just a fucking emoji. Like we just we want to engage with you guys, and that's the only way we could really do it is in the comment section. So yeah, just leave something. Leave a leave a fucking positive comment, negative comment, whatever it is. Just negative say something. comment. <laughs> negative <laughs> say something. <laughs> all right, so, that's it, guys. Anything. Appreciate you. Thanks for listening. Oh, greatest podcast of all time. Peace. Peace. Historical.